after about a month of using the open spot 3 i am ready to give you guys my honest review of this thing and here's a hint don't watch this video unless you're prepared to spend a whole lot of money on a little device like this this time on k6 uda radio So it's been a little over a month now since the kind folks at Shark RF sent me the OpenSpot 3 to test out and do a review on. Well, today is the day that I do the review. We're going to talk about a few things here. Basic setup on this thing. What you can do with this that you cannot do with the OpenSpot 2 or the, uh, the original OpenSpot. Do I think that this is worth close to $300 in today's world. And do I think that this will make your digital radio experience more pleasurable? Well, we'll talk about that right now. But first, I want you guys to uh, hit that subscribe button. If you already haven't hit the subscribe button, please hit the little bell notification right next to it because subscriptions mean nothing in the world of YouTube anymore, evidently. Um, please share this video. That is the biggest way to help me out uh, because that gets more people involved, up, ups my rankings, and uh, then I can make more videos to entertain you guys. Oh yeah, and uh, please check out my Patreon and or my PayPal and consider throwing me a buck or two. Everything goes right back in to making these videos. On to the big review. We're gonna get busy. Come on, let's go. Profile three ready. Ah yes, the open spot three. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier than its predecessor, the Open Spot 2. It does pretty much the same thing, but it does a few things that no other hotspot does in the world. Let's start with the obvious differences. The Open Spot 2 has no buttons on it. It has one recessed button that you had to access with a pin. The Open Spot 3, on the other hand, comes with not one, but two buttons. One to access the Wi-Fi or the AP mode, and the other is a power button. Profile 3, ready. And that power button is the main reason that the Open Spot 3 is a little bit bigger than the Open Spot 2. It's because it has an internal battery. All right, guys. Running down the road here. Um, with the open spot three. This thing is performing flawlessly. I've got it hooked up to my uh, my little FMCA Sprint hotspot. Running off the FTM 400 here. I am uh, got APRS on one side and uh, and my uh, local repeater back home in Auburn on the other side. But uh, there's Dr. Ballin and uh, let's see, I've got uh, Burton N6UG. He's 50 miles behind me. I was just talking to him. South, K6SAL. 60 miles ahead of me. Also talking to him. We got Dennis is uh, tracking all of us on APRS which is kind of cool, and he's kind of being the traffic cop. But anyway, so far, open spot two, performing flawlessly here in the motorhome. So it's not a big secret that the open spot three uh, can do Fusion D-Star or DMR, as well as a few other things like P25 and NXDN. What is different about the open spot 3 as opposed to the open spot 2 or for that matter any other um, hot spot on the market is the fact that it can cross mode and now you could take any one of these three kinds of radios and talk on any other mode 
you want to talk to. So now, the coolest thing about this isn't the, uh, the little hockey puck. It is definitely the software behind it that makes all this run. So let's go take a look at this software. I'll show you how it runs and I'll show you what it can do. Controlling everything here with the, uh, with the iPhone. I'm gonna be using my uh, 878 as the test bed radio. I've also got uh, my FT3 and my D74 all sitting here. So we've got everything ready to go here. So the quickest way that I have, uh, that I have figured out and that I can move around and do everything here under, I believe, settings. I've made profiles and I've made specific profiles for Fusion, D-Star, and DMR. That'll put the open spot onto a frequency that I have designated for each one of these radios and put it into its native mode. Let's take you back to status, to the status page. And this is the first page you come up to when you've got the open spot going. I am charging the battery. I had it on all day yesterday on battery and at night I kept hearing it beep. Couldn't figure it out. Finally I figured it out. It was, uh, it was just about dead. But it had been on for pretty much all day. All right. K6 UDA on Parrot testing one, two, three, four, five. All right. K6 UDA on Parrot testing one, two, three, four, five. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you guys from ground zero. Okay, so the little white is blinking now on here and over here we don't have we're not going to have anything so now we want to come here and we want to hit open spot ap3 we're going to get that going and that is now active We'll open this up. It brings up the access point. It's going to ask, ask us what do we want to hook it up to. Now remember, this is still an access point here. Next. And we'll go to the CUDA net. Connect. So now, this is going to go out. Open spot connected to XCS 3 room 48. On this radio, we're going to go back out to the CUDA net, over to here, and it is loading it up. And to figure out where we we're at, uh, we're on active profile number one is the Fusion. We're on an FCS connector. We're in C4FM mode, and there's our frequency. And there's all where we're hooked up to. Guys, that's exactly how easy it is to get this thing hooked up from ground zero. So we've talked about the seven to eight hour battery life uh, that I'm typically getting out of this thing. What's kind of weird is when you plug it in, if you leave it plugged in, it seems like it's discharging itself and then recharging, which is actually kind of a good thing. Uh, but if you keep it plugged in all the time, you might find that when you turn it on, it's down to about 35%. That's a little bit on the annoying side, but it does charge up fairly fast. I've showed you exactly how easy this is to, uh, to hook this up from ground zero using my iPhone. I would imagine it's equally as easy using 
an Android device. It's a web portal, not a piece of software that's running it. The big thing, the thing that you wanted to know about was how to do the cross modding. How can I use my Yesu FT3 and talk on D-Star? We're, get, we're running a little bit long here, so I'm gonna quickly go through some of the menus and I'll show you exactly how that works. Um, suffice it to say, it does work. Starting with the status page uh, and moving into the connector page, the software looks amazingly familiar like the OpenSpot 2. It, this is not a major rebuild of the software. And likewise, uh, modem page, everything looks very, very familiar. Now I make great use of the quick menu and the menus that are on the main page. And yada yada yada, there is now a dark mode. Yay! This is total fluff, I know, but some of you guys obviously asked for it, so you got it. Alright, to begin our cross mode journey, let's start with D-Star because that is the newest and hardest thing to do. After you pick the D-Star setup, you can now go in and you can pick FCS, you could pick regular uh, reflectors. So there's a D-Star reflector that I've got set up. Uh, let's go in and look at FCS. And there is YouTubers. And if we wanted to go into Brandmeister, there's Brandmeister. And we could set that up and that'll put the radio into the appropriate cross mode. We can also do YSF stuff and uh, let's see NXDN. I'll show you a little bit of the uh, C4FM stuff. We can uh, go in and do the D-Star reflectors and there's 30 Charlie. From C4FM I can also do P25 reflectors. Now also on the quick menu, you can get into the APRS menu from here and from there you can set up the open spot to basically send out your APS signal and uh, I guess you can do the APRS chat thing through here too. Yet it's not exactly APRS. The user manual is accessible right there from the left side of the main screen. That's a very handy location. And the Shark RF link is also available from the left hand side there. I haven't really explored this much, so I don't know really what it does. Now back to the right side of the uh, quick setup menu. You have a quick call, which allows you to, say, drop calls from DMR from those extremely busy talk groups. There is the Brandmeister Manager. This has a whole bunch of uh, functions, and, you know, frankly, I'm not a huge DMR guy, so I don't know what a lot of this stuff is. I haven't used it. But DMR SMS chat. Um, Pogsag, I guess if you're into that whole pager kind of a thing, that's a big deal. The uh, database and the update menu. So you can update anytime you want. Now a quick word about the software updates. Uh, Shark RF has made this seamless, painless, and invisible. Uh, your, uh, your software is going to go out and update itself when new stable software is released and you can always tell it in the configuration menu to uh, accept new beta software and that's where you're going to get the latest greatest stuff but sometimes it breaks so be forewarned okay i just want to show you guys some proof of concept and the fact that it does work I've got the D74 here on the right. This is in D-Star mode, normal D-Star mode, 30 Bravo, testing it out. I have the FT3 on the left, cross-moding into D-Star, and they're both receiving the same exact transmission. This brings me to my last question 
and answer period for the open spot. Three is number one. Is it worth close to $300 US and would I buy it? The answer to both of them is a resounding yes. Look, at $300, this is not a cheap piece of hardware. Uh, it is built, it is built fairly well. I mean, it's a little plastic egg. It's not, uh, you're not gonna take this thing and, and huck it and expect it to live. It's a queen design. It fits nicely in the pocket. It doesn't overheat. It doesn't do weird things that I've seen. It enables me to use one main radio and move back and forth between uh, C4 FM, D Star, and DMR on one radio. So in that respect, it can save you a ton of money because now you're not buying three different radios. And more importantly, if you're into three modes, you're probably an owner of three different radios, but it is a pain in the ass uh, to carry three radios, not to mention you look like a radio dork. So this way you could carry one radio and kind of pick your poison as you go along, which I think to me is very, very cool. If you found this video helpful, if, uh, if you like this video and you like the way I do this stuff, please thumbs up on the video. And for uh, you four or five trolls out there, you know, your thumbs down, that counts too, is engagement. So thank you for watching. Uh, again, subscribe if you haven't, hit the bell notification, share the video because it does help me a great deal here on YouTube. Uh, kind of getting up in the rankings. Consider uh, supporting me on Payta PayPal or Patreon. So, guys, um, again, open spot three. It's out. It's here. Go get one. Uh, they're probably on back order by now. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.